hooked on the BBC, or CCP, if you will. It's often how it goes. A person overcomes one addiction, then another, for better or for worse, comes along to fill the void. For background, see the link to Coming Clean on My Colombian Addiction in the description text. To be truly accurate, as I always strive to be, my current BBC addiction isn't actually new. I more than dabbled in it in my Ireland days. It's just that it has become particularly acute here in Colombia. I think I'd find it very hard to live in the country, or Bogota at least, without it. Be it work or pleasure, this BBC, or for those of another tongue, CCP fix has become a cornerstone of pretty much everything I do. Now, some people would say it's not the worst addiction in the world to have, as long as one doesn't rely on it solely. And I don't. I do balance it out. Nevertheless, one could always do better when it comes to such things. Indeed, a good test to see how reliant, perhaps harmfully so, one has become on something is to try to do without it. On this score, while just the mere thoughts of doing without the BBC for any protracted period make me uncomfortable. Protracted in this sense is in the region of 48 hours. You see, the BBC, beer, bread and coffee, or its Spanish equivalent for where I'm based and following alphabetical order, CCP, Café, Cerveza y Pan, not to be confused with the Chinese Communist Party, is a staple for me. It's the bread and coffee part in particular that I can't see myself giving up, if there was a desire to do so, that is. The beer, on the other hand, well, unlike the other two, it's not a daily delight. I also think that in the right circumstances and our environment, i.e. having my own comfortable accommodation and not living in Bogotá, I could relatively easily get by without beer, or at least drink less. Going without bread and coffee is another thing altogether. This is the problem. Some may not view it as a problem per se, when one uses a panaderia or bakery as an office on a daily basis. It's like an alcoholic going to work in a pub. OK, a good coffee or three a day may, as some studies have shown, do more good than harm to one's overall health. The same can't really be said for the bread on the side, not the majority of bread baked in Colombia in any case. Dr. Pradeep Jamnadas wouldn't be impressed. Yet the floured fusions are hard to resist, especially so when they've just come hot out of the oven. In fact, some say it's the only time Colombian bread from a standard panaderia is edible, when it's still warm from baking. After a day or so, regardless of the type really, it seems to become fairly bland. Although, worryingly so as it suggests the bread is pumped with preservatives, it doesn't tend to mould. Similar to some women I've dated here, it could be said. Thankfully, though, a good number of panaderias have embraced machine brewers, consigning those metal grecas with their tendency to produce tasteless I-can't-believe-it's-not-coffee-coffee coffee to the scrapyard. Personally, this has become more important over the last few years as my brew preferences have changed. It's no longer an 80-20 coffee-milk split, it's more like 99-1. to 1. Thus, the coffee has to be flavoursome, and strong. As for the beer, well, poker, or on occasions Aguila or Costeña or, when in Paisa land, Pilsen, they're all pretty much the same, could win awards for being one of the best and reasonably priced mediocre lagers around. It humbly does its job. In this regard, like the BBC Media Group and the political CCP, my BBC, the beer and bread anyway, is of ordinary quality. Perhaps not the greatest, but not the worst, either. It's also killing me softly, no doubt. Sure aren't we on the countdown to death from the moment we're born, anyway. There are, however, worse addictions to have. With CNN, cocaine, noodles and Nutella, for instance, one is left brain-dead within days. That diet combination may seem nonsensical, but that's CNN for you.